my definition of a successful season is that I want to be on top of my game. I'm absolutely sure that I can beat every athlete on, on any given day. I'm Patrick Lange, two times Ironman world champion, Ironman course record holder, multiple Ironman winner, and multiple German champion, etc. etc. The Ironman champion, Patrick Lang. This guy is the smoothest runner when he gets off the bike I've ever seen in the sport. If you pin a race number on my jersey, I will be a different person die on course to win. I want to be remembered as the guy next door who wins world championship titles. Well, match four then for the men here. Patrick Langer, two-time Ironman world champion, 35-year-old here, goes up in this one. Patrick Lyon had that big crash in the shoulder problem, so he wasn't at 100% swimming as he came into the season. He's in second place behind Aaron Royal. We couldn't see him. You can go from being the Ironman champion and to struggling and getting passed by athletes who are uh, five, six minutes up. Patrick Lang is a different kind of character. He's much more softly spoken. He's more diminutive in many ways. He's just a phenomenal runner. I enjoy flying under the radar a little bit. I'm not uh, this big publicity guy. I know where I come from. My values are, you know, staying with both feet on the ground and having my friends close, my family close. The others, they can underestimate me, but I think uh, if they do, they are really stupid. He's not a loud athlete. He's rather silent and aiming to perform on race day, show what he's got. Patrick Lang is an interesting triathlete. In, in many ways, he's never fully had the respect that he's deserved for his achievements. He's a two-time Ironman world champion, and he's delivered marathon runs in Ironman, the likes that we've never really seen before. But, you know, you have to be aware that I'm in a ultra-competitive country as well. If you look at the German success, Debbie, Jan and I, we were, uh, we were there for all these years and I was part of a generation that um, was super successful and I played my, my part in it. Patrick Lang is not always mentioned in the same breath as Sebastian Keeley and Jan Fredino. Part of that's down to the personality of the latter two. They're definitely big personalities in the sport. They're also big bikers and triathlon fans tend to love people that can push the pedals hard. We are in training camp for 2023 season. We are on the Canary Islands actually, which is nice to have good weather. The season is coming closer. 
We will start latest with the PTO race on Ibiza. It will be an interesting year because it's Patrick's chance in Nice with the meters and altitude, the different bike course and so on to maybe aim for even more than he achieved in, at the Ironman last year. I'm pretty confident that it's going to be a, a very good season. Well, it's certainly the biggest race of this part of the season. You know, when you're looking at the racing calendar, you're looking at this PTO European Open and saying, I want to be there. And if you're not there as one of the leading athletes in the top 30, men and women, you've really got no excuse. And I think when you get all those names towing the start line at the same time, it should make for an epic, epic encounter. We've got the potential for Jan Fredino to race against the Norwegians Gustav Eden and Christian Blumenfeld. That's a showdown we've not seen before. We might not get the chance to see that again. That's really going to excite a lot of triathlon fans and wider sport fans because these guys have started to transcend. But there are other athletes there as well on the men's side that you could throw into the mix. Is Alistair Brownlee going to turn up fit at the start line? Is Magnus Ditlev, who's been improving every year, is it? potential to become a colossus in the sport. Is he going to be there? Is Sam Laidlow going to back up his performance in Hawaii last year, for example? There's so many names that we could throw into the mix on the men's side to make it an intriguing and exciting race. People will be eyeing the PTO European Open with a lot of money on the line in May for that. Yeah, it's all to play for and yeah, so much to look forward to. Patrick Langer, a full distance, he's a two-time Hawaii champion. He's had some unbelievable Ironman victories, victories at Roth. I don't necessarily think we've seen the best of him at middle distance, but I also don't think that's necessarily his distance. If we see Patrick Langer ever any, anywhere near a podium in a 100k race, I think that would be an unbelievable achievement by the German. I'm absolutely sure that I can beat every athlete on, on any given day. No, I grew up in a, a little town called Bad Wildung, right in the middle of Germany. In school, I felt more and more hard to concentrate. So my mom took me uh, to a doctor and he said, yeah, he has ADHS. Here are the pills uh, for your son to calm down. And luckily my mom decided uh, that I go to the athletics club. So no pills, my therapy was sport. My dad was also a marathon runner, always looked up to him. Actually couldn't wait to, to, to join his running squad. Then we had a little um, competition in, uh, in my hometown. It was a bikeathlon. Yeah, my mom signed me up for it and she said, that's absolutely your thing, and I absolutely loved it. That was the moment I like, kind of grew into the multi-sport scene. After school, I, I went to the army for two years. I was always racing uh, on the side as a professional. I was too quick for the age troop racing, but actually too slow for the big professional races. I put everything on one card, uh, quit my job, prepared for Ironman Texas, actually right here where we are now in Fuerteventura, <laughs> and won it. And that, that was the start of my racing career. Two thousand eighteen um, was was like finishing on this this super high first man under eight hours in Kona. Winning the second time, proposing to Julia, 
yeah, quite some fashion, I think. Yeah, I had this, this, this highest of highs, becoming a, a, a sports personality of the year as a triathlete, from all these Formula One drivers, tennis players, soccer players, those, uh, you know, massive sports. Just was absolutely amazing. Yeah, but sometimes <laughs> if you fly high, then you can also fall pretty deep. He is a very sensitive person, which probably not a lot of people might think, being a professional athlete. He's just very passionate about what he does. He just puts his heart and soul into it. I was ab absolutely determined going into the 2019 um, season. Had actually also really good build up. The night before the race in, in Vietnam. Got a call from the doctor. That's where he found out that his mother had cancer. Yeah, that was a, was a beating. Um, what I was doing meant so much to her. Didn't want to like publicly speak why I was sucking at races all of a sudden. I was I don't know. They were always connected and um, I think as soon as you realize that you don't have a lot of time that you can spend with your mother anymore, it always changes things, so. The, the worst thing ever was to, to be in Frankfurt. The biggest race for, for German media and she was in the, uh, in the clinic there, visited her, uh, was with her during the, the chemo with all this stuff running into her. So straight from bed to press conference and all of a sudden I had to say, oh, I want to win this race and it didn't make any sense to me at all. Yeah, the race result speaks for itself and all the media they were like, oh, what's wrong with him? And is his career over? And, um, I didn't want to say what's, what's really going on because I didn't want to help my mom to read in the newspapers. I'm, I'm in a bad mental position because I'm, I'm, I can't stand this. Spending time with her uh, really helped uh, a lot in, in the grief. She showed us again how, how strong she really is. I learned that uh, why, why maybe, maybe I am as persistent as, so where, where it comes from, you know, seeing her and having, having my mom um, shortly before her diagnosis. Watch me become the world champion. Um, with the proposal and everything, yeah, it means a lot and was, uh, yeah, was really happy, happy to have her there, happy to have her on the pictures now, you know. In the end, I have the feeling it made me, like, really grow up, you know, realizing how, how precious life is. It changed my mentality also of handling setbacks, because the biggest setback in sport you can have is by far not as big as something that my mom had to went through. Yeah, I remember the, the last 
few words that we were exchanging. She really wanted me to to try my best and get back to to win races. So I try to make her proud. I think Patrick Lang is an example of someone who's taken the talents that he's got and really maximised that when he stepped up to long distance triathlon. Probably pushed himself way more than 99.99% of the population could to achieve that, maximising everything he's got. Physiologically, I think he's also suited to a course like Hawaii for the Ironman World Championship. He's a slightly smaller athlete. He seems to cope really well in the heat. And if that's him going and being a beyond human as an athlete, then I think, yeah, it ticks the box. I think if there are a lot of things that, that I've proven, it makes me actually really proud is that I was overcoming this bullshit talk of he should retire. I'm actually proud that I was able to level up again with the sport, you know, we see the sport evolving so fast, times dropping so quickly. I was one of the first ones introduced a 240 marathon to the world of long course racing. And now, you know, five years later, six years later, you almost cannot win. This young generation really levels up. In uh, Magnus particularly, I have kind of a, a kryptonite. I think I was able to beat everyone in the pro field except for Magnus. I remember racing against him in 70.3 uh, Poland. He won, I finished third, and uh, in, in the finish uh, I said to him, I'm pretty sure that this was the last race with an empty, <laughs> empty suit, so you're, you're definitely a man of the future. Magnus Ditlev is a potential future world champion, could even be this year. Nearly broke the world record in Challenge Roth last year. The drive still coming from that I know that I have unfulfilled potential, like absolutely. A run like the run in Israel, everyone was so excited and showed me the, the time. My first response, fuck, where does this 32 seconds come from? I want to be sub 2.30. These are always the, the moments where I realize that I'm still burning for what I'm doing. At the moment I have the, the best mix, focus and determination to go through all the hard sessions. I don't think there's an athlete who has got a bigger discrepancy between what they produced at full distance and middle distance than Patrick Langer. Some of the marathon times we've seen, it's been the fastest marathon times we've seen in the sport. At Ironman distance, Patrick Lang has got it cracked. Anything shorter though, and he's still got a lot to prove. Many people think the race dynamic has to go Patrick Langer's way for Patrick Langer to be in contention. Whether that's true or not, I think we'll see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.